So it's time for me to go ahead and break down my thoughts of the Google Pixel 6a after owning it for probably like nine or 10 days now. Now Google did send me out this phone initially, but I don't know, like I think that's awesome. I would have bought it anyway. I had a feeling they weren't going to send it to me to be honest. They also sent me out a lot of other phones too, but I bought a Pixel 6 last year. And honestly, for that value of the Pixel 6, I was probably more in love with that phone than the Pixel 6 Pro that they sent to me. So it's always weird how the price tag really does make for how good a phone is. And that is very important to think about. With the Pixel 6 Pro, that is arguably a better phone. And I got that one for free. But when you think about it for how much that phone costs in the real world versus something like the Pixel 6 at $599, I believe, even though the Pixel 6 Pro is the better phone in every area, the Pixel 6, I think, probably was a more at probably a better phone when it came down to it in general, when you consider the price tag. And that's exactly, exactly how I feel about the Google Pixel 6a. I think a lot of people looked at this phone as if this was a thousand dollar phone and to compare it against the thousand dollar phone, we shouldn't necessarily like, you know, for example, I compare the Pixel 6a against the Pixel 6 Pro. And in that comparison, I big up the Pixel 6a a lot because of the price tag and what you're getting. Yeah, it's not going to outcompete any of these other phones and the display on this phone may not be that great, but but from my tests, from everything that I threw at it, it is a very capable phone. And seeing the evolution from the Pixel 3a to the 4a to the 5a now to the 6a, it is a really good upgrade from pretty much all the A series of phones. It's not going to replace the Pixel 6, but when the Pixel 6 gets discontinued, this is going to be a very solid phone coming out in the next few years because this phone's going to be supported with software. It's still going to be available in the used market as well. And that's why this phone, I think, is one of the better phones you can probably buy this year for the price tag. On the outside, standard glass in the front, hole punch display. It's a 6.1 inch OLED panel. And I think it's a very good panel. It's 60 hertz. Again, it's not a 90 hertz or 120 hertz. And I will say with Android devices, even with the stock Android one, there are still a lot of glitchiness in the frames and everything. You know, that's kind of just what happens. If you give me like a, you know, Pixel 4 a, it's the exact same experience, Pixel 5 a, exact same thing. There's just a little glitchiness here and there. But I will say the moment I bought the Pixel 5 a, I thought that was a 90 hertz panel because it was smooth. I think there's something going on with like Android 11, end of Android 11, end of Android 12. They kind of have to smooth things out a little bit, but totally okay. The whole punch display looks beautiful, not that much to hate on it. The feeling of this phone though is what's really surprising for this price tag. You have to remember that the 449 phone of last year was the Pixel 5a and that honestly also felt pretty premium for the price tag, but this phone just completely dominates it. That phone was completely built out of aluminum for the most part. This one has a glass back on it which feels so good in the hand. And again, that is one of my favorite things about this phone. It feels very premium. It doesn't really look that cheap and you know I think for this thing looking almost exactly like the Pixel 6 I think that is a massive feature about this phone for sure. Now it's not perfect it doesn't have wireless charging on the back which I think is okay for the most part but it is very strange you know how hard could it have been for them to put wireless charging on this phone. The Nexus 4 from many years ago that I used for like almost two years that phone had wireless charging like you can't tell me they couldn't put it on this phone I don't even recommend wirelessly charging your phone but we don't even have the option here. On top of that, you don't have a 90 hertz panel again, which is kind of weird, but you know, I think overall on the outside of this phone, they did a good job, you know, and I think for that price tag, it elevates that up to a great job. And for this thing to be the successor of the Pixel 5a, I think they honestly did a really good job with this. Now, in terms of the camera setup, this is the one area that's either make it or break it for Google. They either do a really good job or they do a pretty much average job. And I think with this one, they did a pretty good job when compared to the Pixel 6 and Pixel 6 Pro. You do have a, you know, dual camera setup, a wide and an ultra wide sensor, 4K 60 on the back, 1080p on the front. Now, this is pretty much in line with the Pixel 6 camera, although the Pixel 6 camera is overall better than this thing, but I still have a couple issues with the Google Pixel camera in general. For one, when compared to a Samsung Galaxy camera, there really aren't any crazy features within the Pixel 6a camera that, you know, a Galaxy S10 doesn't have. Even a Galaxy S10 from 2019 has 4K 6 on the front and back, and that is a arguably better sensor than this thing. And you can buy a Galaxy S10 for way cheaper than this thing in the used market. So I feel like Google, they, they focus on quality a lot, which quality of photos are great, but we don't have any like worthwhile features in these cameras that personally make me look at these phones and like, wow, that is 
really cool. We look at iPhones, for example, they have portrait mode and they have cinematic mode, and that's kind of it, you know? But you look at that camera and the quality of that camera and the lenses and the smoothness of that camera when you're zooming in and out of photos is really cool. The Pixel 6a and just pixels in general, in my opinion, do need to improve on the capability of that camera and giving us pretty much more features at the end of the day. So that's kind of another thing I wanted to state. The camera itself isn't bad. I think it's a pretty good camera. But for the last few years, I feel like Google just needs to focus more on giving us more features built into that camera and maybe not waiting as long to just, you know, implement some of these changes. So in terms of that camera, you know, it's a feature. I like it. But one of my favorite things about the Pixel lineup, as most of you know, is the is the software landscape. This thing is going to be updated for so many years, you know, comparatively to other phones in the market. And that is one of my favorite things about owning a phone like this. This is not going to be outdated tomorrow. And when you buy something like the Google Pixel 6a, this phone is going to be here for quite a bit of time. And for me personally, I think that's awesome. I like buying a phone and not having to worry about the updates for many years from now. And this is one of those devices. So when it comes down to it, this is probably probably one of the better aspects of this phone is how long this phone is going to last. And that is honestly one of my favorite things about it. But this brings us straight into the performance of this phone. And I will say with it having that Google Tensor chipset with six gigabytes of RAM, I personally do think this is a huge asset for this type of phone. Just to kind of keep in the back of your head, this phone has the same internals as the Pixel 6 for the most part. It's not like exactly the same, but it has almost the exact same internals. It has two gigabytes less of RAM, but for for the most part, this is almost the exact same speed and performance that you're getting from a Pixel 6. And that is really awesome. It has a less RAM and it may have some weird things here and there in the back end, but this is a very capable phone. And I've compared this phone in terms of speed against the Pixel 6, the 6 Pro, the S22, the iPhone 13s, a lot of other phones across the market. And I will tell you, this phone is a fairly fast phone for the most part. I've seen a lot of other reviews of this phone as well from, you know, when people on Reddit talking about it and people are kind of raving about the performance of this device, but there's always going to be times where these types of phones need to be improved a little bit. And I will still say the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chipset is still a faster processor than the Google Tensor. And you could even say the A15 Bionic is faster than this one as well. However, I think about the future of the Google Tensor chipset. And I think that Google, like I said before, you know, they are starting at ground one. They have to kind of build out from here. Just like with Samsung with their Exynos chipset, those were notoriously not as good as their Qualcomm ones or as, you know, the Qualcomm ones. So now Google is in the same boat. They're going to have to go ahead and improve this, you know, performance of this chipset. And Google's name is on this. They have a ton of money and I'm pretty sure they're going to spend a bunch of money to make this the leading chipset, just like how Apple did with the M1 and M2 chipsets and the A50 bionic in my opinion too so we're going to see what's going to happen in the future and i'm pretty sure these pixels are going to get faster over time i just wish it was faster but that's kind of where we're at right now so I will also end it off with the battery life. In my opinion, the Pixel 6a gave me really good battery life as well. When I compare this thing against the Google Pixel 6, the Galaxy S22, and the iPhone 13, just on strictly standby time, I did a full speed test. My Google Pixel 6a was giving me so much better battery life than the Galaxy S22 and the iPhone 13, but it also gave me better battery life than the Pixel 6. And that was something I was not expecting. I was not expecting that phone to be giving me better, you know, battery life in that standpoint. So that is another weird thing. You just really never know about the performance of these phones. You know, when it comes down to it, the price tag of this phone is what reels me in. I look at the price tag of this phone and for $449, you are getting a very, very capable phone that's almost perfect. There's some weird things going on. There's no 90 hertz or 120 hertz display. I wish there was expandable storage, but we're never going to get that from any phone anymore. We have no no wireless charging, no reverse wireless charging like the Pixel 6 Pro. And those are really the only things I can kind of think of. On top of that, no 4K 60 on the front, no telephoto lens. And that's kind of it. You know, I think other than that, this phone is pretty good for the most part. And I think it's a really good successor coming from the previous Pixel 5a. When compared to the Pixel 6 or 6 Pro, obviously it's not going to outbeat it or anything. But for the price tag, it's very interesting to see how less than, you know, an iPhone 13 Pro or, a, you know, Galaxy S22 Plus or S22 Ultra, how half price of those phones can get you. And this is one of those devices. So I would love to hear your thoughts about this in the comment section below. Hit the like button. That would be so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out, well done.